What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates Today so we're going to be talking about does MK677 cause brain damage? So, this is a, you know, more obscure topic, but, you know, it's touched on in the community, and there have there's been links between chronic ghrelin exposure and uh, negative mental outcomes so i did cover this briefly in my original post but you know i feel like getting a separate dedicated video is warranted for this topic in particular so the data this derives from is the data on rats that showed enhanced fear so one study on rats evaluated mk677's potential to cause enhanced levels of fear so like i mentioned there's evidence to support that one of the ways ghrelin is modulated is through exposure to stress so if you don't already know ghrelin is the hunger hormone it basically stimulates signals to your brain that you're hungry and that you have to eat so as you'd expect when it's time to eat and you haven't eaten in a while ghrelin levels get higher and after you have ate a bunch of food ghrelin levels decrease to help you notify your brain that you're satiated essentially so when you like artificially inflate this or artificially create super physiological amounts of ghrelin secretion you artificially make yourself hungry essentially and this is why peptides like ghrp6 ghrp2 and secretagogues like mk677 cause such a drastic spike in hunger is because you're basically tricking your brain into thinking you're hungry when you otherwise may not be aside from the obvious you know potential negative ramifications of overeating as a consequence of this the the evidence does support that one of the ways ghrelin is modulated is through exposure to stress like i mentioned what the study intended to assess specifically was if rats would have a greater likelihood of experiencing fear and post-traumatic stress disorder when their ghrelin levels are artificially raised 24 7 with a ghrelin, ghrelin receptor agonist which was mk677 so they were administered mk677 continuously and frightened constantly <laughs> now this is a really weird you know study measure metric to use like giving a rat mk677 and scaring it constantly to see what happens but their difference in response was assessed so mk677 versus the non-treated group rats with chronic ghrelin elevation were found to have enhanced fear memory compared to baseline so what does this mean well first of all this has yet to be replicated in human trials or in anecdotal logs so there's clinical data showing you know like over a year straight of exposure to this compound without this being found in the data whatsoever granted are they looking for this in the data i don't know but in the rat data it appears that there is some sort of negative outcome but the reality is you probably shouldn't be chronically exposing yourself to ghrelin secretion in the first place because there's auto regulating mechanisms in your body for a reason so this I don't believe MK677 is meant to be, it's kind of hard to say, because obviously the literal reason to be developed is to give it to growth hormone deficient children, basically. So, or growth hormone deficient people in general, I guess. But I mean, I'm assuming it's more so kids, based on what I've seen, kids in, you know, that are going to go through puberty and don't have enough growth hormone and hence don't have enough IGF-1 and hence experience hindered, you know, growth something like you know like lionel messi for example he had to get prescribed growth hormone injections because he was not uh gonna grow to normal height otherwise so in this capacity this would be like a cyclical use of the compound it's not like it'd be used for their entire life so people who are using this compound as a sort of hormone replacement therapy alternative or a means of replacing gh first of all most of these people probably shouldn't be using it for that purpose to begin with because they probably aren't GH deficient or IGF-1 deficient to begin with. Most people are using this stuff. It's for, you know, performance enhancing purposes. In addition to that, chronically elevating your blood sugar with MK677, is that going to have a negative impact on insulin resistance? I believe it's going to probably force you to eventually have to implement blood sugar control strategies that you wouldn't need to otherwise because it does have a significant effect on uh, blood glucose levels much like high doses of gh does mk677 will raise your glucose levels quite a bit because even cause reactive hypoglycemia in people who are becoming insulin resistant and there's lots of cases of 
people who, you know, especially if you're like borderline diabetic to begin with and you throw MK in there, like that could push you over the border. So for somebody completely healthy, you could take yourself from completely healthy to like mildly insulin resistant if you deploy MK for like years straight. Much like the same occurrence that would happen if you deployed a high dose of growth hormone for years straight. However, in terms of would this effect on the brain, I think the thing you should be worried more about is the insulin resistance rather than the, uh, it's tough to say because I don't really know at the end of the day, is it going to negatively, you know, degrade your brain? I don't think so based on the clinical data. However, I don't think artificially inflating a hormone like ghrelin, which is regulated by stress to begin with, is a good idea in terms of I don't think it's going to cause mental degradation necessarily, but I think your feedback loop of reacting to stress could be impaired to some extent and may have to, you know, upregulate after discontinuing long-term MK use because, you know, your, you know, feedback system's all fucked up. But I don't think that this is just my hypothesis. I don't think it's going to like literally like give you Alzheimer's or something which is like what is postulated in a lot of these forums, it seems like, when they talk about mental outcomes. But I do think that chronically elevating your ghrelin with a ghrelin receptor agonist is probably not the best idea years on end. So if you're trying to, you know, treat a condition with this compound, which is like what the clinical use of it is supposed to be, you know, I'm sure for the duration of use, it probably has a you know low risk profile while keeping an eye on your fasting blood sugar. But as far as like when you get into years on end of this compound, you know, who knows? Pro there could be some sort of negative outcome. And I think the main problem is, first of all, the insulin resistance also being compounded by the fact that you're cranking your hormone up that's going to make you eat more. So you have guys that are not only increasing their blood sugar via the same mechanism of growth hormone. So becoming more insulin resistant via just the literal mechanism of growth hormone spiking through the roof. In addition to that, you have guys overeating on this compound because their ghrelin is artificially elevated 24 seven. It's like the equivalent of pinning GHRP six, like six times a day. Like that's what this stuff does. And that's just going to further impair insulin resistance. If you start overeating, which is what a lot of guys end up doing on this stuff. So is there some sort of negative outcome with that? Yeah, it probably is. But at the end of the day, you know, your stress feedback loop, I don't really know. I think there's probably some sort of mechanism that would get downregulated during its use and then probably return to normal after its use. But perhaps there's like a burning out effect like there is with testosterone and HPTA. You never really know. So anyways, I'm just laying out the data for you as I see it. I think the more immediate concern when it comes to MK is insulin resistance rather than potential, you know, your brain falling apart. So that's what I would get. Make sure you have a blood sugar monitor if you're going to use this stuff or GH because becoming insulin resistant is a very real thing that can happen with GH use, with MK use, with peptides, with whatever, especially if you're using things that are around the clock like MK and like, you know, GH when you have chronically elevated IGF-1 levels around the clock. Like we're not talking about a pulsatile peptide that's in and out of your system like in an hour. We're talking about something that's keeping everything elevated 24-7. So there's definitely, you know, monitoring that has to occur if you want to make sure things are in check because, you know, the majority of the population does not have a blood sugar monitor when they use GH or secretagogues, and they probably should because it would help you keep your risk profile lower and, you know, nip things in the bud before they even occur in terms of, you know, negative outcomes. So anyway, that's my sort of elaboration on the data to sort of lay it out in a way that's not fear mongering, but also is not promoting its use because... A lot of guys are completely polar opposite one way or the other. MK is the godsend or MK is the worst fucking thing that's going to happen to you. So, yeah, that's sort of my sense on it. So, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Check me out on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. Check out the podcast, link in the description below. Drop a five-star rating if you don't mind. Helps the algorithm. Drop a comment in the YouTube uh, video. It helps the algorithm for sure. And uh, much appreciated when you guys do that. Subscribe to the newsletter, video description below as well. If you want to get organized emails with all the clinical references I make in these videos in an organized format with table of contents and just 
a very organized, more professional layout in terms of my content rather than having these off the cuff talking without some sort of organized way to jump back and forth to what you want to look at and the corresponding hyperlink clinical studies. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.